And okay, so some interesting thing is that our next speaker, Tony Tone, he is also working on uh, things related to human body reconstruction. He is currently, Tony is currently a research scientist manager at Facebook Reality Lab, and his project includes the creation of next generation of virtual humans for AR, VR applications. And before joining Facebook, he was an assistant professor at Kyoto University. Uh, so I will think I will just present Tony's pre-recorded video. And let me just share my screen so that I can. Mm -hmm. How can I? Okay. Wait a minute, I can't see the share screen. Okay. It looks like Tony is here, but then he's yeah. really yeah. muted. Yeah, he prefer to use the, oh, yeah, sure, it works now. Hi, I don't think we hear you. There's no sound. Yeah. Uh, you you sh share the sound. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe let me let me try to refresh and see. Yeah, sorry about that. This was sometimes so happen for pre-recorded videos. Uh, we cannot hear the sound, oh, so really? maybe I turn on the sound sharing. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah about the sharing the sound. So Other okay. wonderful okay. times where we have to stay at home and work remotely. Like me, you most certainly realize the importance of communication technologies and of being connected. Whether it's for work or for personal matters, it's been tremendously helpful to have a cell phone and to be able to video chat. However, like me, you have certainly felt the frustration of not being physically there at the conference venue, for example. For this presentation, I wish I would be standing in front of an audience and feel the energy of the room. But of course, on the other hand, I'm happy to be at home in a safe place with the people I love. Nowadays, with the current technologies, we can see each other and have face-to-face -face communication from almost anywhere in the world and while being thousands of miles apart. This is great, as it allows people to stay connected with their families and friends, and it allows people to continue doing business when physical distance is needed. But we still talk to each other through small windows, whether they are phones, tablets or monitor. We can't see much and we can't feel much. We can't share and interact in a common space, and that creates the distance. As you know, a lot of researchers and engineers around the world have been working on building the future of communication with AR and VR that would come in the shape of glasses or goggles. These tools specifically would allow people to see better, hear better, and even share remote objects and environments. They will bring people closer together. At Facebook, my mission is to help making this happen. Me, my team, and our collaborators are working on the next generation of virtual humans that will enable authentic and believable communication and interactions between distant people. We will bring faithful representation of humans that can be driven or to share experiences in virtual environments. Capturing humans and representing them in virtual environments, although it has come a long way, is still a very challenging task. So I'm not going to do a review of the past two decades of 2D reconstruction methods, but as a summary, I would say it has become conventional to capture human performances using a multiple view camera system, like this one from Kyoto University. It has 16 video cameras that can capture multiple people from every angle. As the cameras are calibrated and synchronized, 3D models can be reconstructed per frame using multi-video stereo techniques. Here is the Panoptic Studio from CMU. It has much more cameras and can capture and track more people with less occlusion issues. 
Nowadays, 3D human capture systems have become more ubiquitous and transportable, and in some sense more affordable. These systems can serve to create high-quality contents or assets for virtual worlds, or to capture and learn specific details of the human body. But actually, there's no free lunch to obtain very clean 3D reconstructions directly from raw data. You will have to find ways to remove sensor noise and fill holes in areas where information is missing. Let's look at this capture from the 3D Video Studio at Kyoto University. The captures were used to create free viewpoint video of intangible cultural assets like this traditional Japanese dance, which might be close to a century old. The system is capable of reconstructing subjects with high fidelity, even with loose closings and severely occluded limbs. Here, you can actually see all the cloth natural deformations and wrinkles and guess the positions of the legs as the dancer moves, even though they are unseen. But what this tells us is that if we want to be able to capture human performances and reanimate them, or control them with our own motions, we need to be able to infer the body pose under the clothing. Our brain can easily do that, but it's more difficult for a system to learn to reconstruct what it cannot see. At ICCV in 2019, we presented DanceRack. Maybe you remember Yuan-Lu's presentation as he was lucky to be on stage before COVID-19 spreads. DanceRack is an end-to-end -end framework for jointly estimating 3D human pose and body shape from a single monocular RGB image. Here we show results obtained for, from per frame inference on handheld videos. The results are quite interesting as 3D pose and full body shape are inferred even with partial body occlusions. If we look at the literature, most frameworks try to solve the 3D pose and shape directly given an RGB image as for most images on the internet, only one view is provided. Usually, 2D joints or 2D skeleton would be estimated, and then a trained model would lift the 2D joints to 3D. Some methods would also introduce a parametrized body shape in the training to obtain plausible body shapes. However, since they usually rely on only few key points located at the skeleton joint positions, the inferred shapes are usually very approximate. In dense rack, we address several problems. First, we introduce dense landmarks as intermediate representation. This, these landmarks, given by dense poles, and defined densely on the surface of the body, provides richer supervision and hence better body shape inference. Also, dense pose was trained on images in the wild, where the human body was densely annotated. It allows to obtain per pixel body parts and body surface of humans in any positions under loose closings with severe occlusions and cluttered background. In addition, we created a synthetic dataset using thousands of arbitrary body shapes and motion data, rendered under random camera views with similar descriptors as dense, as dense poles. This large-scale dataset provides ground truth parameters for millions of human body poses and shapes and is a key contribution to obtain accurate poses for images in the wild. DanceRack consists of a two-step framework. First, an IUV image of dense landmarks obtained by DanceBose is used as proxy. This allows the model to be invariant to background clutter and lighting conditions. A generator network would then regress the body shape parameters. In addition, there are two more features in DanceRack that are important. First, we have a render and compare loss that relies on the differ differentiable rendering of the human body as an IUV image. This loss is particularly um, important as it adds per pixel supervision of the, of the body shape. And you can find details of all the other loss, like the reprojection loss, body part mask, and adversarial loss in the paper. Second, our model jointly learns from both synthetic datasets and real-world datasets. We utilized any available supervisions mitigating the problem of, of unpaired data. Our experiments show that DanceRack obtains great performance on public benchmarks, 
for various human-related tasks like 3D pose and body shape estimation and semantic segmentation. We also noted that in particular, body orientation issues and flipping occurred less, while we also have body, good body shape inference. Here are additional results against state-of-the-art methods. All methods do inference per frame, per person, meaning multiple people are processed individually and stitched together to render results. A framework used dense pose that outputs multiple people detections from anywhere in, in the scene. Our method is suitable for real-time system at 30 frames per second. Furthermore, once body shape and pose are estimated, we can then add closings on top by retrieving and wrapping 3D close models matching the observations. This allows to considerably leverage the representation as we don't just output unclosed people. But to faithfully replicate a closed human from images, we would need to reproduce exactly the closings. That means either we can create garments on the fly from visual observations using existing templates or we have to infer them. Last year at CVPR, we presented Arch. This was actually a very fun project thanks to all the collaborators. Arch is a framework that enables the reconstruction of full body shape and appearance, including hair and clothing, from a single image. It tackles a lot of problems I discussed earlier. First, it learns a deep implicit representation of the full body from one image. It allows to reconstruct a complete surface with details and without holes from one single view. Second, we disentangled the pose and shape representations so that we learn to reconstruct a model that can be freely reanimated. So we propose an end-to-end -end solution to 3D Fi, a 2D photo of a full body. It can also help 3D artists to automatically create 3D rigged avatars for AR VR applications. Automatic rigging of a 3D model is actually a challenging task as methods are usually sensitive to the topology of the 3D model. This is a problem that we solve by learning to map the different body parts from the image space to a canonical space, hence disentangling the pose from the shape. Here is the art framework, taking as, taking as input a 2D image. We have a 3D body estimator that is used for the disentanglement as it allows to define a deformation field and transform the body to a canonical space. Of course here, we use DenseRack as 3D body estimator. We then learn a deep implicit representation of the closed human model in the canonical space where the human pose is in A pose. So this is quite powerful as it allows to learn to reconstruct a complete human body with clothing and hair and without holes from an unconstrained photo where the subject is in arbitrary pose, as opposed to other methods based on pixel aligned representations that are limited to humans in standing pose only. In addition, our pipeline features a differentiable renderer that adds supervision to obtain accurate normal and color est estimation. Few words on the dataset. To be able to reconstruct from a single image, we actually created a dataset of 3D scans of closed people seen from multiple views. The scans have textures and were rendered realistically with colors so we could have a pixel-wise association between the RGB images and 3D points in the model and canonical space. Note that most of the 3D scans were not in, in APOS. They contained self-intersections and had to be pre-processed as shown here to make the topology compliant. 
Hence, our model infers implicit representations of 3D surfaces that are inherently rigged and thus ready for animation. Just few words on the differentiable renderer also. It's a sphere-based renderer with opacity term that we use for refinement. It provides perfect supervision on the 3D reconstruction and predicts occupancy normal on color. It's published at the CVPR. We evaluated our framework on, on several datasets. We obtained good performance quantitatively and qualitatively. You can check the details in the paper. Arch robustly handles arbitrary poses with self-contacts and occlusions and reconstructs higher level of details than existing methods. Here we evaluated on 3D scan datasets and internet images. Subjects are seated, with cross limbs or with partial occlusions. Moreover, as said, outputs are read and animation ready. This is an example of detailed reconstruction. Look at the hands in particular. Traditional methods struggle to reconstruct fine structures like fingers, but you can achieve that thanks to the body prior. This is a subject with partial occlusion, a non-trivial pose as you can see with the side views. Here is another example on a challenging video from the above dataset, where the subject leans forward and backward. Here, we want to showcase the robustness of Arch at reconstructing arbitrary pose. The reconstruction is done per frame, but remains smooth. And again, thanks to the disentanglement of the pose and shape, we are learning in a canonical space, Arch outputs can be automatically read, hence allowing animation using any motion data. This is a great feature, especially for such an under-constrained problem from in one image. However, we can see that the reconstructions don't exhibit apparent variations, although fine details are reconstructed. Geometry is just deformed by linear blend skinning and doesn't reflect dynamic changes. One way to tackle dynamic changes is what we did with the project TextMesh that was presented at ECCV last year. TextMesh reconstructs geometric and appearance details from a subject in motion given its pose. The method processes video per frame and generates dynamic details. As you can see here on the right, close wrinkles on Tian Ching's shirt are recovered as he's moving around. Given the lighting environment, the method recovers an albedo map, which is with crisp details. The reconstructed model can be used in virtual environments with different lighting. In practice, we fine-tune our models on a short example, on a short example sequence for self-adaptation, and we run the model at interactive frame rate afterwards. Our model takes an RGB video as input, with a corresponding environment map and a per-frame tracked mesh at coarse resolution. The outputs are a fine mesh reconstructed per-frame and a high-resolution texture shared across the whole video. Text mesh allows to reconstruct sequences with fine dynamic details. The framework consists of three modules. First, albedo normal estimation from RGB and spherical harmonic lighting. Then we have the texture generation module from selected albedo images. And the mesh refinement module from the normal and body shape prior. One of the interesting techniques we used here is actually pre-tuning on synthetic data and then fine-tuning on real data. This allows to obtain nice 3D reconstructions of humans in motion that you can animate in virtual environments and read it at will. So as you may know, there are lots of discussions on what's the best representation for closed humans. Whether it's a volume, a surface, one mesh, multiple layered meshes, or an implicit representation, it actually all depends on the desired applications and thought resolutions. Text mesh learns on sequences of a line surface. This is practical for learning across sequences. But in some situations, we see limitations due to topology changes, like when we close or open a jacket. In that case, it's preferable to have multiple layers to handle closings like in reality. For example here, even though it might be quite subtle over streaming, the different layers of simulated clothes with different garment properties allow the generation of realistic deformation behaviors. The models on the left and at the center with texture maps have clear boundaries, similar to the real observation on the right. 
so when the hands and shoulders are raised, the shirt would naturally lift. Capturing and reconstructing close deformation and details is a challenging task that has been explored for several decades. It's difficult because clothes needs to be tracked and also its deformation is non-rigid. Depending on the body shape and motion, which are driving the deformations and the clothes materials, wrinkles can come in any shape and size. And one might need very high, re high resolution 3D mesh models to reproduce all the fine deformations. And usually, running physics-based simulation on high-res mesh with existing software can be very time-consuming, requiring lots of tuning and might not still re return satisfying results in terms of realism as we can see here. At ECCV in, 20, in 2018, we presented Deep Wrinkles, a generative model that reconstructs fine close details from a lower resolution model driven by, motion, by, by body motion. As we show here, generated closed wrinkles are realistic and accurate with an un unprecedented quality. The main idea is actually to generate detailed images in UV space of cloth models. Here we show how details are added to low-res low normal maps. Normal maps and images in UV space, in general, are well supported by traditional 2D engines and can be used to render realistic details on 3D models. The generation is done by an image transfer network based on the conditional GAN. The two main results for, from deep wrinkles are First, it is possible to generate realistic details of clothing at, pix at the pixel resolution level by learning the nonlinearity of the deformation. Second, this architecture allows the creation of 3D details using traditional 2D CNNs as opposed to, to using 3D CNNs that have memory limitations. Here, on the top left, we show low-resolution normal maps that are used as input. The high-res output is shown in the middle and the ground truth is shown on the right. Here are some results on 3D digital, digital humans. We show the benefit of using separate closed layers and how the deformations driven by body motion look believable. For example, the shot goes up when the arms are raised. Also, we show that, to some extent, the generated deformations can support different variations of the body shapes while remaining realistic. What Deep Wrinkles also taught us is that real datasets are a great source to learn to create realistic clothing. And the more data we have, the more we can learn from the real world, like how garments made or specific materials behave, how they deform and wrinkles, but also how clothing are designed or scaled. However, it still requires a lot of time-consuming processing efforts to process raw data. For example, just to separate the different closed layers from 3D scans. Our early experiments consisted in capturing people wearing a green suit under the closings to extract before we developed more advanced techniques. I think the right remembers well how tedious the 3D segmentation process was. And also, we have to cope with self-occluded areas and noisy reconstruction. So a lot of this burden was solved by Sizer that was presented by Garvita at ECCV last year. Sizer consists of Parsonet, a model that automatically segments clothing, and Sizenet, a model that generates clean garments at the desired size, with accurate clothes fitting. This was made possible thanks to the Sizer dataset, a new dataset that contains 100 subjects wearing clothing of different sizes, for a total of 2,000 models. Here are examples of close parsing and size generation. You can see how the fitting is inferred depending on the body shape. I invite you to check the papers for details. These new techniques are very valuable to process datasets, to further push the boundaries of model, of model learning. They allow to create realistic data with a lot of diversity, which is important for generalization, generalization as you can imagine. 
This year at CVPR, we present a new technique to synthesize high-resolution editable textures for closed humans. Given a segmentation mask defining the layout of segmentic, semantic regions in the texture map, our proposed semi-supervised method generates diverse high-resolution texture, te texture maps, sorry, which are then used to render 3D humans. Each example shows a UV map and corresponding 3D meshes rendered with the map. The style of each class can be controlled individually by manipulating the input style vectors. To obtain these results, we first train networks to generate full UV texture and segmentation maps from partial UV maps obtained from partial views of subjects. And we then apply this data generation pipeline to thousands of real fashion images. This allowed us to obtain images with full body semantics in a semi supervised fashion. Here is an illustration of our end-to-end -end framework. The style and encoder encodes the region-wise styles from the input, which are then used by your model to learn region-specific style distributions. The generator synthesizes texture maps given per-class style vectors and desired layout, the segmentation map. The generated texture is then upscaled and used to render 3D human meshes. Please check out Mindita's presentation and the paper for details. So we've seen that with better understanding of 3D pose, shape, dynamic details and appearance of bodies and clothing and environments also, we have important components that help to get closer to the full representation of a compelling virtual human that can be captured and driven by limited sensors. In addition to the visible layers, the non-visible layers also need to be properly modeled, even though they are more challenging to capture. These include the muscle activation and the all biome biomechanical properties of the body as they are crucial to obtain proper contact with the environment and enable interactions. And there are also all the micro details like the pore of the skin and every single hair strand that are essential to make a, a virtual human real. In the end, we should be able to obtain an authentic and flexible representation of ourselves that can be used to freely interact and share good times together with our friends in any virtual environment, even when we are physically remote from each other. All right, thanks everyone for connecting and listening to this talk. These are really exciting times we're living now. A lot of progress has been done over the past few years on virtual humans thanks to the acceleration of AR and VR. And there are so much more to come and to do. We're only at the first one person to the ultimate solution. But the next person might not be that far. So please stay tuned, contact me, contact us, and let's create the future together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's a pretty nice talk. Yeah, okay. So since Tony is here, um, I would like to know if the uh, audience have any questions to him. Hey, Tony, uh, thank you for the nice presentation. Um, I'm wondering in the slides, in the demo, in the end and, and in the beginning, you also show the um, skeleton targeted to the subject. Have you uh, been doing something on this topic? Hey, Marilyn, thanks for the question. Um, you're referring to the, uh, the skeleton with the, uh, which one, with the, the muscle model? Uh, so both the, the muscle model and also like there is a sequence where I think it's you on the video moving and the skeleton yeah. in movie is moving uh, also. Yes, body. yeah. So uh, actually, yeah, we are uh, we've been exploring uh, different methods uh, for uh, markerless motion tracking. So um, different with using different type of inputs. So uh, in the talk, I presented um, um, techniques uh, based on the. On monocular RGB from videos, that's a dance track. But um, yeah, the, 
we use as well other techniques using uh, different types of uh, input with depth as well. Okay, so it's more about tracking the kinematic tree rather than tracking the anatomical skeleton or modeling it right, so far, right? Yeah, at the, at the moment, so we, uh, we, uh, we've looked at uh, tracking the, uh, like, like inferring the, uh, the joint uh, transformation and uh, we're developing as well um, uh, this uh, musculoskeletal model uh, where we can uh, detect the activation of, of the muscles based on, uh, based on, the, on the motion. And the idea is that uh, with uh, this, uh, with this um, realistic or physics-based representation of the body, uh, with the muscle, then we would deform as well the surface uh, of, uh, of, of the human more uh, accurately. So um, that becomes important, um, especially when, we, uh, when you, you start to look at the contact with objects or with the environment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So um, if the audience has further questions, feel free to use the chat box to um, post the questions to Tony. And Tony, if you're free, also you can feel free to use the chat box to reply to the question if they have. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, yeah, for, anyway. yeah. thanks for the nice talk. It's very cool. Um, OK, so uh, let's welcome our next speaker, um, Professor Ima. Uh, it, uh, Professor Ima is currently a, uh, at UC Berkeley. and. I know that previously he was also an uh, associate professor at UIUC from two, um, two, um, 2002 to 2011, and also the principal researcher of Microsoft Research Asia from 2009 to 2013. So he was then a founding professor and the executive dean at Shanghai Tech University from 2014 to 2017. And now he came back to UC Berkeley where he obtained his PhD. Okay, yeah, so let's welcome um, Ima from uh, the, talking about his interesting talk about 3D parsing. Yeah. Um, probably you're muted. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me share my screen. Just let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try to make the switch to the full screen. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, and uh, it was very exciting uh, workshop and uh, listen to all the good talks. Uh, what's happening to my, okay. Can you see the full screen now? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, uh, this is a work about, you know, as you can see the title, how to, you know, using sort of back to the fundamentals now, right? Um, how do we detect 3D geometry? How to really understand 3D, uh, get a 3D reconstruction? Um, so this is a topic has been very classic, right? Uh, probably everybody in this workshop should know, right? The history, probably 30 years or 40 years of practice. Um, so uh, it's kind of interesting. This source, I started with this with my PhD 